Maker Snack. Assembling and testing the mini round robot chassis for our Circuit Python powered Raspberry Pi robot. Hello, bot builders. So, this is a look at what we're going to have when we're done with this video. This is the Adafruit mini round robot chassis. You can see that it's got two solid aluminum layers here. They're separated by brass standoffs. I put a Jackery battery in the middle, and that's what I'm using to power the Pi. Uh, on top of that, on the first layer, I've Velcroed on a 4AA battery pack that powers the motor hat. You can see um, we've got this nice caster ball in the front. I've got the wires set off here with some Velcro. Uh, I've also got the Pi in its own housing. So everything is looking good. We're going to build this. We're going to test it out. It's going to run. Let's build that bot. Now we've already opened this case because we've taken out our two motors and we've tested them, but we'll get all the other components out. Now if I empty this bag, we don't need these two little panels yet. We're going to mount those on the motors. But if we take a look at our two aluminum chassis panels here, both of these deck plates are identical. Now I'm going to position them this way because I'm going to put my Jackery battery in between these two plates. And when you do this, you want to make sure if you've got a battery like mine where there's an on-off switch, that that's going to hang off the back, that you're not going to be obscuring the on-off switch with the position of your plates. Now I'm going to be using this Velcro tape here. It's actually two pieces of tape with sticky on the back of each, and that allows you to uh, disassemble parts pretty easily. So I'm going to measure this out, but I don't want to obscure my on-off switch. I'll mark it right about there. It's where I'm going to cut this. And in fact, this tape is um, the full thickness of the stick. I really don't need it to be that thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half too. And then what I'll do is I'll remove the sticky backing on uh, one of these pieces of Velcro, but I'll keep the other piece stuck to it. I'll put it in the back of my Jackery, again, making sure that I'm not obscuring the on-off switch. The on-off switch is going to be on the top, so I'm putting the Velcro tape on the back. And I'll stick this right on here. And now, once I've got this aligned and looking good, I'll remove the sticky backing from this other piece of Velcro tape that's attached to it. I'll align it to my chassis, press it on tight, and my battery is attached. Now I'll add the brass standoffs between the two plates and the ball caster that's our front wheel. Your kit has four brass standoffs, so we actually only need three. Now in the front of this plate, we've got two circular holes that are aligned with each other. We're going to take this second hole, we're going to put a screw up through the back, and we're going to screw a brass standoff on the same side as the battery. So you can just slide that on and tighten it up. And now we're going to take this ball that acts as our front wheel, and notice that it's got a screw in there, so we push it up from the bottom underneath the battery, we put the nut on the other side, and we tighten that up as well. You don't have to be super tight, but you can use some pliers to make sure that things are snug. Now we'll put the last two standoffs opposite the wheel on either end of the back end of the plate. There are screw size holes there for you to put the screw up and then screw the standoffs in on the other side. And with our standoffs in, we're ready to attach our motors. Now remember, we tested our motors in the previous video, so what we want to do is we want to disconnect these motors from the motor hat just so that it's easier to work with. I use these pin connectors with some extra wire, but if your motors are screwed directly into your hat, feel free to unscrew them from the hat, and you can screw them in later. And so the procedures and parts are identical here. What I want you to do is to take each motor, and um, in the side opposite where the wires are, I want you to push the screw through. So the part that you screw in with a screwdriver is opposite where the wires are, and on the side where the wires are, that's where you're going to push in this little mounting plate. You can see that there are two holes here. They line up with the two screws, and then you can just put the nuts on top of those and tighten those up. And these little metal plates are gonna be used to hold the motors in place in between the two deck plates of our robot chassis. Use a screwdriver to make things snug, and this is what your two motors should look like when everything is set up properly. Next up are the wheels, so let's take these out of the package and we'll get rolling. You can see that we've got two tires, two wheels, and two screws. If the tires are stuck together, you can pull them apart, and then you take the tire and you wrap it around the wheel. Once you've got both wheels with their tires on them, then we can put a wheel on each of our motor axles. Now you can see one side of the wheel has a, a little oval depression and you're going to push in the white axle that's opposite the mounting plate. So the wheel's gonna be on the opposite side of the mounting plate. Just, uh, it might be a little snug there, but just jiggle it in. And then what you can do is once it's in, you can flip the wheel over and screw the wheel in through this hole on the other side of the axle. And now we're gonna create a motor and battery sandwich between the two mounting plates of our chassis. I position each motor so that the cap where the wires are coming out is facing closest to where the front ball wheel is. And this is probably gonna be the most challenging piece. I've built a few of these bots and most of the time all the parts line up, but sometimes things are just a little bit off. So you see that there are two slots on each of these chassis plates and they're identical. They should line up with the slots 
that sort of poke out from the mounting plates on the two motors. So you want to push them through, you want to press them in hard once you've got everything lined up, and then you want to put in the top plate. And again, you're going to check to make sure that you've got your mounting plates poking through all the holes they're supposed to. Then you might need to jimmy these brass standoffs to get the final screws in. But again, make sure that your sandwich is all in there, your motors are snug, the pins are in the right place. And if things are still giving you a hard time, it's okay to try to flip the plate over. Sometimes they go together a little bit better um, on one side or the other. But this is how everything should look when it's all set up and snug. Notice that the red motor pins are pushing through the plate mounting, and those motors are going to be snug when our bot runs. Now up next, we're going to put our four AA batteries on. That is what we use to power the motor hat and the motors. And so you want to make sure that you put this on the chassis so that the on-off is facing up. Then on top of that, we're going to put our Pi. I'm going to put an acrylic case underneath the Pi, in between the Pi and the battery. And I'm also going to use some more of our double-sided Velcro tape to attach everything. Now prepare a couple of strips of Velcro tape. I'm going to put the tape right on top of the holes that attach to the plates that are holding the motors in place. Stick them to your plate, then stick the battery pack on top, press it down, and your battery's attached. Now you could attach your Pi to your battery with some sticky tape, but I got this nice Adafruit acrylic case. It's only about five bucks. Take off the motor hat to make it easier to slip the Pi into the case, then you can put the hat back on. Um, I do have on one of the standoffs, there's a screw that makes it a little tough to get this inside of the case. So I'm going to take off one of the standoffs, but then everything is going to slide in properly. Then use sticky Velcro tape to attach the Pi to the battery case. Make sure that the Pi doesn't overhang the on-off switch on your battery. You want to be able to reach that. If you took any wires off of your motor hat, make sure that you reconnect those. So there should be two wires for every motor, and you've also got two wires for power. I use these little connectors, so I'm just going to slide them in. Make sure that red goes to red and black goes to black or your motors will run backwards. Then just make sure that your Pi is powered up. So you should have a mini USB end plugging into the Pi. And then the other end of the USB goes into, in my case, I've got this cell phone battery that I'm using. Also make sure that you've turned on the power to the hat. That's that second battery pack. And with all the wires in, one of the things that you might want to do is attach some Velcro tape just to tame the wires here. So I've taped this right to the side of the case. That just makes things look a little bit nicer and they're out of the way of the wheels. And with all the lights on, we're ready to write some code and see our bot run. So now that we've got our bot built, we've got to put some code on it. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. I'm going to SSH into our bot. So we're at pi at pybot.local. I'm going to log in. And we're here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my browser to the page where we have our GitHub repository. I'm going to grab the stuff for the PyBot test, but I'm going to make some changes here. So again, every time we want to run code, we want to grab this first stuff in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it through this first block. And I'm going to do a Command C to copy it, minimize. And then what did I do? Um, nano first road test dot pi. I'm going to paste this in. If we take a look at what we've got in this section here, what we're going to do is we're going to go forward at full speed and then wait one second. Now I'm going to copy this chunk of code and we're going to paste it in a few times and I'm going to make some changes to it each time so that my bot moves in different ways. So I copied that highlighted code, Command C. I'm going to give myself some space, do a Command V to paste that in again. And instead of going forward at full speed, now just to test everything out, I'm going to go backward at half speed. and then also wait a second. And then what I'll do down here is I'll go left and right. So I'll go full speed. So I'll do Command V to paste that chunk of code again. Um, and I'm gonna set my other motor here to a negative one. So I'm going full throttle in one direction, full throttle in another direction for one second. So it should spin. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So I'm just gonna grab this, copy it and paste it down below, but I'll flip the sign on the throttle value. So my left motor will go backwards at full speed and my right motor will go forward at full speed. And what I'll do is just also Nate rename this. So this is left at full throttle, right at full throttle. And they're actually gonna spin left and right in place. And this will be back at full throttle. So now that we've got it all, we can do a control X to exit out. Yes, change it. This is the name I want. 
and now type in Python 3 first road test dot pi and when you press enter we should be running well all right we got a little bit of kick and pick up there you can see it uh, jump forward when we're at full throttle you also see that we're just a little bit off and this is common with dc motors they're not perfectly calibrated to each other but what you can do is you can just adjust your throttle values to try to make one side faster or slower than the other side but you just built a functioning robot congratulations up next let's learn about mqtt and then we'll build our app to connect our iphone to our bot keep at it bot builder